pregnancy is the most beautiful thing that can ever happen to a woman. In fact, for most people who don't believe in miracles, the next time you see a woman who is expecting, know that you are seeing a miracle. But as miraculous and beautiful is the experience, equally true is the fact that a pregnant woman needs to take utmost care of her health. And it's during pregnancy that a woman is at her most vulnerable self. And one disorder that concerns a lot of expecting mothers are the gastrointestinal disorders. In fact, a research says that gastrointestinal symptoms are becoming extremely common in pregnant women. And helping me understand the prevalence, the precautions and remedies for the same is Dr. Amal from Astra Clinics and Hospitals. Doctor, welcome on the Omar Show. Thank you very much, Omar. Doctor, uh, today we wanted to talk about the diseases that are very common during pregnancy. When a lady gets pregnant, a lot of changes happen in her body. Absolutely. Which are obviously physiological. This is a natural process. For example, when they get pregnant, their hormones change. Mm -hmm. These hormones dictate various terms to various organ systems, including the intestines. And it's very common. It's common knowledge that ladies feel nauseated, mm -hmm. they vomit. In fact, it's taken as part and parcel of being pregnant. Absolutely. All these are hormonal changes. Then there's this issue of the uterus which grows mm -hmm. and then it displaces the various organs. Correct. And can cause different kinds of symptoms in a normal person. Mm -hmm. Other than that, you know, there are patients who have diseases and they get pregnant. So the symptoms of their diseases can change. They can vary from a normal person. Mm -hmm. And a doctor really has to be on their toes to make sure that they catch the symptoms at the right time mm -hmm. and in the right context. So what exactly is gastrointestinal diseases? Gastrointestinal diseases deals with the problems associated with the digestive system. That includes your food pipe starting from the mouth right to the exit, mm -hmm. as well as associated organs like the liver and the pancreas and the gallbladder and the bile ducts and all those things. Mm -hmm. As you said, the uterus grows. So yes. obviously there are other organs that are mm -hmm. uh, uh, the placements changes. So what are the mm. common symptoms? Let me divide the answer into two things. Mm -hmm. One is the symptoms which a normal person would get mm -hmm. and the other is a person who has a disease and gets pregnant and then how the symptoms might Correct. Uh, you know, change. So like I said, nausea and vomiting is very common. That happens because the hormones during pregnancy, they slow the movement of the intestines. Mm -hmm. So food stays in the stomach longer so it can reflux, mm -hmm. cause some burning, heartburn, obviously nausea and vomiting. On the other hand, when the colon moves slowly, then constipation becomes a fairly common problem. Mm -hmm. Interestingly, the small intestine actually absorbs more nutrients during pregnancy mm -hmm. because it has to supply for two Good. individuals, mm -hmm. the mother as well as the baby. Mm -hmm. So these are the common things which we see mm -hmm. during pregnancy. On the other hand, uh, there are certain disease conditions which become more common mm -hmm. in during pregnancy. For example, reflux. Mm -hmm. so when there is something occupying space in your tummy, the pressure goes up and whatever is there in the stomach keeps jumping up and down. And acid in the stomach which jumps up can cause a lot of burning or you know, it can also lead to interesting symptoms like sore throat for example. Mm -hmm. Women with asthma could have their asthmatic attacks becoming a bit more common during pregnancy. So these are the things which uh, happen. Another aspect is the biliary system, you know, the gallbladder and the bile ducts. So again, the gallbladder becomes a bit lazy due to the effect of hormones during pregnancy. And the bile becomes more saturated with cholesterol, so stones start forming. Okay. But I think our physiology takes care of that because these stones really don't cause any problems. Mm -hmm. They do form, but they don't cause any problems. What happens is once the patient delivers mm -hmm. and the hormones start going back to normal, normal then the biliary system starts contracting with vigor and starts throwing those stones, stones out and then out. they can land up in problems. Okay. But we do see some patients who come with, you know, inflammation of the gallbladder during pregnancy and mm. then we have to deal with it. During pregnancy, it becomes very tricky to uh, inspect all these things. So how, mm. how do you really uh, figure out the exact problem that is happening in the stomach? It's kind of tricky. Mm -hmm. It's very tricky. Because, because a lot of tests you cannot mm. do. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You have your limitations on how many x-rays you can do, whether you can do a CT scan or not. There are certain tests like MRI which are safe, but most of the times it's a very thin line that we are treading. For example, uh, you should not dismiss an important system, uh, symptom 
as something that is just normal. On the other hand, you should not be over treating a normal symptom and a lot of restrictions are there on what medicines you can use because not all medicines are safe either for the mother or for the baby. So yes, it's a very fine line to trade on. What I would say is uh, if you have a good rapport with your patient and if you have been following up the patient for a while, then your senses are tuned to pick mm. up these things uh, you know, more easily. But it's always tricky. But at the same time, we should not allow this kind of a, you know, uh, conservativeness to prevent us from doing something which is really essential. Yeah. So if a doctor has a strong suspicion about a disease, then I think the best thing would be to go ahead and do whatever is necessary. Even things like x-rays. Even things like x-rays. As women, when we are pregnant, what are the things that we can do to take care of it, prevent it, or just make some changes that can make us uh, healthier? I think just like as in the, in the non-pregnant state, mm. following a healthy lifestyle helps. helps. So eating right and working out and uh, hydrating yourself, uh, all these things help. For example, if nausea and vomiting is a problem, then taking small amounts of meals at frequent intervals, mm -hmm. that helps. Hydrating yourself and keeping the stomach s filled with something at uh, all times also helps. Mm -hmm. And uh, exercise, working out, constantly moving helps a lot. So I guess uh, the same rules as applies to a non-pregnant state would apply through pregnancy as well. Mm -hmm. And obviously when you're working out, you have to be careful not of to course. put too much pressure on the tummy. I think uh, our mothers and grandmothers are you know, well versed in all these mm -hmm. things. Absolutely. And they were way more physically active than I'm we sure are they in were, today's age. Yes. So we need to really make sure that we are physically active, but at the same time doing something that is light and uh, at that time right for us. Exactly. Thank you, doctor. I think it was very, very helpful. Um, all the pregnant women watching the show will definitely get the information required right now for them. Thank, Thank you. you. It was my pleasure.